What's up my pre-calc people? In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the 2024 AP pre-calculus free response question number three. This was a modeling a periodic context problem and hopefully you're ready for it. It actually wasn't too, too bad. So let's dive right into it. The tire of a car has a radius of nine inches and a person rolls the tire forward at a constant rate on level ground as shown in the figure. Point W on the edge of the tire touches the ground at time T equals one half second. The tire completes a full rotation and the next time W touches the ground is at five and a half seconds. The maximum height of W above the ground is 18 inches and as the tire rolls, the height of W above the ground periodically increases and decreases. So what do we know just from this information? Well, we know that to go all the way around, start to finish, ground all the way back to ground is two seconds. That's one half second to five and a half or five half seconds, which is 2.5. So from 0.5 seconds, one half, to 2.5 seconds, it's a difference of two. So it takes two seconds to go all the way around. Now we also know that the radius is nine, is nine inches. Therefore, when it's at the very, very top, it's 18 inches above the ground. Now, here's the next part. They say the sinusoidal function H models the height of point W above the ground in inches as a function of time in seconds. So here's what I like to do. I like to think about this. And first of all, I made a, what I think was a much better, cooler picture of it. But here it is right here, starting at the bottom. And that is at one half second, or if we'd rather just put 0 0.5. And at 0 0.5 seconds, it is zero feet above, or zero inches above the ground. Now, I like to always break it into a quarter. What's happening at the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, and then full circle. Now remember, we already figured out that when it goes all the way around, it's at 2.5 seconds or five halves, 2.5 seconds. That means the period of this cycle or the whole cycle takes two seconds. So when I think about a quarter, I think about, you know, how do I break apart two seconds into a quarter? So if I take two seconds and break into a quarter, that is 0.5. So that means every one of these quarters of the circle happens a half a second away from each other. So this first quarter point right here is going to happen a half a second later, which is now at one second. Remember, we started at a half a second. So a half a second later, one quarter of two, we're at that one second mark. And now we are at nine inches above the ground because we're at that radius level, right? We're nine inches above the ground. Then at another quarter, another half second, now we're at 1.5 seconds. And at 1.5 seconds, we are now at its maximum of 18 inches above the ground. That's the radius of nine, another radius of nine. Then at three quarters, another half second, that's now at two full seconds. We are back to that radius, one radius above the ground, which is nine inches. And then after another quarter uh, rotation, which is a half a second, uh, so I'd be taking us back to where we knew we were ending, and that's at two and a half seconds we are back to that ground level of zero. Now, if you understand this concept of moving around, then hopefully the next parts can be really, really easy. So the graph of H and its dashed midline for the two full cycles is shown. We have points F, J, F, G, J, K, and P are labeled on the graph. No scales indicated, no axes are presented. Determine the possible coordinates for these five points. Now, here's the key thing we know. At a half a second, we start at ground level. So ground level is going to be its lowest point. That's its lowest distance above ground, which is going to be zero. Now I could do that at J, but that wouldn't make sense because then G and F would be kind of going backwards in time. So I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extend this down here and I'm going to have this be my starting point. So at one half seconds, I'm at zero, or you could also put 0 0.5, zero to half of a second, we're at zero. Then after one full rotation, remember one full rotation is right back to where it at the ground. We know that that happens at 2.5 seconds. We're back to that zero. And again, the difference between where we started and where we ended is that one full period of two seconds. Now, we already talked about that quarter point, right? That quarter point is first off a quarter point, a quarter of the rotation or a quarter of the cycle. The cycle takes two seconds. A quarter of that is going to be a half a second. So now that brings us at one second, we're at that midline, which is that nine inches above the ground. That's this point right here at one second, we're nine inches above the ground. Then after another quarter, we're going to be at to our max, and that is at 1.5 seconds. We're at our max of 18 inches. And again, that's this point right here. That's that two quarters around or, or half the way, way around the cycle. And obviously, 
a half of the cycle. The cycle's two seconds. A half would be one second. So if we started at 0.5, then one second later, we're at 1.5. So hopefully that makes sense. And then at three quarters, we're at that two second mark. At that two second mark, we're back to our midline, nine inches above the ground. Then again, after one full cycle, we hit that 2.5 seconds that we knew about. We're back to ground level. After another quarter of a cycle, we're at three seconds and we're back to that midline of nine. And then at another quarter of a cycle, which is again, one half second, we're at 3.5 seconds and we're back to that max of 18. And we can keep going even though we don't need to, but another quarter um, cycle, we're at four seconds, we're back to that midline. But the points that they wanted us to label are these points right here, which I have labeled very, very nicely for you right here. But the key thing that really does help is if you start back here. You know, it's not drawn, you can clearly add it in. It makes it really easy to kind of see that starting point where we're starting at ground level, zero inches above the ground. And that happened at that half second. All right, now the next question says the function h can be written in the form a sine b times t plus c plus d, find the values of a, b, c, and d. So keep in mind that a and d are going to be our vertical transformations, and b and c are going to be our horizontal transformations. So let's go back to that graph, and the first thing I notice is the midline. The midline is very easy to see. It's right there in the middle, and we see that we're at that midline of y equals 9, and that's pretty easy to see because all of our y values are 9 there. So that means our d value is going to be 9, nice and simple. Next up, we're going to think about that amplitude. The amplitude is how far we go up or down from that midline. So at that midline of 9, if we go up to 18, that's 9. Or if we go down to 0, that's also 9. So our amplitude is 9. Now, that doesn't mean the A value is 9. The A value could be positive or negative 9, all depending on if we see a reflection across the midline, which we're going to talk about here shortly. But we do know that A is going to be, you know, the absolute value of A we know is going to be 9. That's important to note. Next up is the period. We already mentioned several times that one full cycle from the beginning where it was at the ground level all the way to the end or, or, or one rotation around where it was back to that ground level took two seconds. So if our period is two, we know that B is pi. And here's my work for that. The formula to find the period is two pi divided by your B value, but I know my period is the two. So now I'm gonna multiply B to the right hand side and then divide both sides by two and I get that pi equals B. So keep that in mind as well there. Pretty simple as well. All right, so now we kind of got the basic idea here. The only thing left to talk about is our C value. And this is where it could get a little bit tricky. It says that we are a sine curve. So what I like to do is I like to highlight a sine curve. So for example, I might highlight this sine curve right here. Where we start at our midline, we go up to our max, back to the midline, down to the min, back to the midline. That's what one traditional sine curve looks like. Now, if that's the case, I do want my A value to be negative. So my A value, I'm, whoa, 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 I'm so sorry. I want my A value to be positive. I totally misspoke there. Because remember, if your A value is positive, your sine curve is going to go up first, not down first. Now, if this is where I'm going to choose to start, then I need a C value of negative one. Because I, you know, traditionally, a sine curve starts at zero, zero goes up, down to its min, back to the midline. So if I'm starting at one, when I'm traditionally starting at zero, that means I move my graph right one. And to move a graph right one, your C value needs to be negative one. So that is one option that we could have here, is that our A is nine, our D is nine, our B is pi, and our C is negative one. Now, what I call the non-negotiables, D and B cannot change, no matter what. And the absolute value of A has to be 9, but 9, it could the A value could be positive or negative, which I'm about to actually talk about. And then the C value, again, for the first example, we started right here, was negative 1. But I want to show there's actually more possibilities that you could have and still get this fully correct. Another possibility is if you look at this as your starting point. So here's my sine curve starting at G, going down to the min first, then to the max, back to the midline. Now, if that's the case, your A value is going to be negative because notice we're going down first. There's a reflection across that midline, so that A value has to be negative. D value is still 9, B value is still pi, but now I'm starting at 2. I'm looking at my sine curve to start at 2, so I'm going to need a C value of negative 2 because it traditionally starts at 0 by moving it 2 units to the right. 
And there's another option as well. I could also start my sine curve right here. I could say, here's my sine curve going up, coming back down to the min and going over to here. That is one full cycle of a sine curve right there. Now that would need a positive A value because it's going up first, no reflection. But again, if I'm starting at K, then I'm gonna to need to shift the graph right three, which is gonna be a C value of negative three. And I actually wanna show you one more option you could have. You could also continue this backward trend all the way to here. Now remember, that would be a quarter of a rotation backwards, which would actually start me at zero comma nine. Does that make sense? Again, I'm going, remember, we already talked about this. The period is two seconds and every quarter is gonna be a half a second. So if I go back a quarter, that would take me to zero. So if I look at this as my sine curve, well, once again, I'm gonna need a negative on my A value because I start by going down. There's a reflection across that midline. And this time I actually don't need a C value at all. My C value would be zero because I'm actually starting at zero and that's where sine traditionally starts. So you got four options for which you could have, but know that your D and your B value are always the same. Your absolute value of A has to be nine, that's your amplitude, but it could be negative depending if you see that reflection across the midline. And then where you decide to start your sine curve is gonna determine what your C value is. All right, let's now move on to part C, which is gonna be asking you about a specific interval. The interval they're asking us is about K to P. So if we look at K as time one and P as time two, we want us to look at that interval. Now part one, this is what a lot of kids get confused on, is asking us about the function values. Which of the following is true about H? H is the function, the height above the ground. Well, if we bring in that graph and we highlight K to P, the first thing I notice is that all of those heights are positive. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. They're all positive. So I definitely want a positive as for my H's. None of those H's are negative. In fact, at no point in the graph are my heights negative. Next up, I want to look at what's happening as we rotate or we move from K to P. Well, those heights are increasing. Again, I just went through at 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. They got bigger. So the answer here should be A, the H values, the heights are positive from K to P and they are increasing. Now, the final question says describe the rate of change of H over that interval T1 to T2, which again from K to P. So let's once again bring in that graph and let's highlight K to P. Now, what do we notice about the rates of change? Well, the first thing I notice is that they're all positive. If I pick any point in this interval and I look at my instantaneous rate of change, it's positive. Well, that's because you're increasing. When the function is increasing, your rate of change has to be positive. But I also note that I'm concave down. And when you're concave down, that means your rates of change are decreasing. So for example, they start out rather positive and then they actually get less and less positive. So the rates of change are all positive, but they're becoming less and less positive, which means the rates of change are decreasing, which we see because we're concave down. So here's my write-up for this, this last part. The rate of change for point K to point P is positive and decreasing since the graph is concave down. The rates of change are all positive in this interval, but less and less positive, hence they are decreasing. All right, so hopefully this question made sense. Question three on the FRQ seems to be the one that a lot of kids struggle with because um, it involves the trigonometry and sign and, and graphing the points. But hopefully they did a great job explaining it. And hopefully you, you watch this video and you're thinking, yes, I, I know I got two or three or I got all four, five, six points out of it. And that'd be awesome because the more points you get here, the more points for your grade. But hopefully you got all six points. But even if you got some of this correct, hopefully that's a good thing. You at least got three, four, maybe even five points. All right, hope you did great. Can't wait to see you in the next video.